Hi, this is Paul from globaltradingsoftware.com. This is a follow up video. I made a, a video earlier on today and I'll put the link down in the description. Um, the auto trader took a, a big breakout for me, this move here. And uh, then it adjusted the stop trading stop and eventually I took profit. Uh, I made the video about this, uh, this bullish pennant and breaking out and it did and it formed a wave three on the Elliott wave. So what I'm doing now is tracking this behavior of this pullback and looking for a fifth wave move. Some of the things I'm using to measure this. So I've got the Elliott wave indicator suite. Uh, we're looking at this pivot. Uh, when we uh, use the Elliott wave indicator suite, we're looking for obvious starts of a trend. OK, so this is the five minute. That bottom there is where I've isolated the wave count. We've come up wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four. And now we're in the wave four support zones. Another thing we're looking at as well is the false breakout stochastic here. So during the wave three, we've got these yellow dots at the top, which is what we're looking for. OK, when that happens and the and the break and the and stochastic comes back down and crosses over in the over sold zone, there's a good likelihood it wants to return back to that overbought zone and that false breakout. Um, stochastic. So that's a, that's a strong bullish trend. We also look at what we call the Elliott wave oscillator. So during the wave three, we see the crown on the oscillator here in green, and then it pulls back during the wave four. This pullback needs to be between 90 and 140 percent. So everything looks good so far. Okay. So then we just need to zoom in a little bit here. So these pullback zones represent probabilities. So there's a blue zone up here, which is your fifth wave target zone, which is actually in my 15 minute support and resistance zone. So that's a really good target. But what's got to happen first is we need to find support either in the green, the amber or the red zone. Starting from the rock bottom, the red zone represents a 75 percent probability. If that support holds and it starts to move back away, that it will go and hit that fifth wave target zone. 80% with amber, 85 in green. So right now we're just hovering in this amber zone, which is good. We've got an 80% probability of hitting that fifth wave target zone. So the other thing with the Elliott wave, well, Elliot wave indicates we've got this 6-4 moving average high, this blue moving average, and the 6-4 moving average low. Now we need to break this to, to get us an entry, okay? But I, I'm always reasonably conservative in my entry. I want to go a little bit above. So even on this candle, when I started to track this here, I was above at 3.4480. That's still giving me a risk to reward of one to two to the bottom end of that target zone and this support and resistance. So I've got fresh air. I've got support happening reasonably well right now. So the scenario is we've got to stop here just below that wave four low at this moment. We've got a long order at 3.4480 with a target of 3.4580 at the 1 to 2. Now look, just formed a new wave 4 low. Look down below, what have we got on the false breakout? We're still good, we've not got false breakout on the bottom. Our wave oscillator is still good. So we've just got to adjust our stop Entry, I think, still remains the same. We're going to use the, we adjust the, there, okay. <clears throat> so we're still good. All we've got to do now is wait and be patient. And trading is about being patient. This trade may not come off. You have to find reasons not to trade. And if this red support zone here for this wave four pullback is broken, we will not take the fifth wave trade. If we get the false breakout dots on the bottom here in the oversold zone, we will not take the trade. If the oscillator breaks the 140, we will not break the trade. Simple rules. You have to find reasons not to take the trade. Now we can see the manager, this candle has now gone red. So it's got more volume than the previous candle and it has higher than average volume. Okay. 
It doesn't mean it's going to continue to go down. We need to wait for the candle to close because this is high volume, higher than the previous candle and it's higher than average. If that candle rejects those lows on high volume and then the following candle gets a higher, higher, higher low, that's what's called a high volume rejection. This is a good sign for our fifth wave move. Again, no rules have been broken right now. We just have to sit on our hands and be patient and wait. We can do a little bit of work. We can understand that our stop in theory would be at 3.4350. Okay. At this moment in time, we've got around about 26 seconds left on this candle. This is what we call a high volume rejection. Okay. Massive. We've got higher than average volume. There's more volume than the previous candle and we've rejected the lows. That's what we're looking for, really, that behavior at that wave four. So we've got about nine seconds left for this candle. What we can do, though, we can be more aggressive with the entry. So we can bring the entry down as long as it's above that 6.4 moving average high. So I'm going to probably look for the 3.4470. So I'm going to bring that down to 3.4470, just a little bit. I'll take that off. OK, and then we're just going to adjust that stop just to there. OK, one tick below. So our risk to reward is still one. Our minimum for me is one to one point six. So we're about one to one point eight. So another thing that we look at now is we've got this high volume rejection, you know, it's called a hammer, but it's gone with high volume, higher than average volume, it's rejected the lows. That's a one candle wonder. The next candle has to get a higher, high, higher low. Otherwise, this means nothing. So we're still waiting on those rules. Uh, I've got the bias depth heat map here on day trading setting, for example. And on this, on the low time frame now, we have red. We're neutral on these, and then those higher time frames down here on green. So um, we, you know, we could find support here. No rules have been broken so far. Uh, we just need to wait. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the video and come back, whether we get in the trade or whether we find that reason not to get in the trade. OK, so a couple of things have happened here. Uh, the, the Elliott Wave Oscillator, the pullback has still stayed within 1940%. Fantastic. There's been no false breakout on the bottom on the stochastic and that is now heading up. The bias depth heat map is all green for the last two candles. So what I've done is I've seen this candle just close here and it closed uh, with a high of around about 3440. So a couple of ticks above that is where I've got my entry now 3.4450. I want to keep it nice and tight with the risk. So the stop is at three four three five oh just beneath this wave four so we've got a we've got a risk of let me have a look at this twenty ticks okay we've got risk of twenty ticks for a potential forty plus tick move so that's fantastic we've got a great risk reward the fifth wave target zone is in uh, what we would say is my 15 minute support and resistance zone. Um, so we've got a great bit of fresh air. Even if we just attempt this previous wave three, we're at one to 1 1.6 and we'll be, tra we'll be trailing that stop anyway. Uh, so right now this looks very, very good. And we've just got to wait for the entry uh, and uh, if, if that happens, uh, just to manage the trade. So what I'm going to do, again, I'm going to pause the video, wait for something else to happen, then come back and do a little bit more. OK, so looking good. Uh, one of the things I've done right now is when we get to the one-to-one -one, uh, section, I've made the trade risk-free. So uh, just to recap, uh, we waited patiently for the wave four, understood the behaviour, the rules for trading the fifth wave move. I then adjusted the entry uh, on the last segment, and then we, we got an entry, pulled back a little bit, a little bit of uh, heat, not a lot really. And then we had two big candles. First candle was a little worrying here, 
uh, as it rejected the highs on higher than average volume but then it just went for it with higher than average volume up here so we're test what we're doing now is we're testing this um, sort of zone here uh, where we had that wave three and that clustering at that point there so the best thing to do at this time is just to make it risk free okay you don't want it to pull back in here because it's most likely going to fail uh, and so we have the target in mind all we need to do now is just be patient and wait we are risk free the trading stops a couple of ticks above the entry we can let it run we've got a good bias on the bias depth heat map everything's good but if we get some data out or something that sends it the other way it'll take it out we won't be in a loss it's not quite reached that fifth wave target zone yet um, but this this resistance this price zone uh, that that formed the wave three is causing a bit of an issue right now so i'm going to leave the video there uh, hopefully all of that makes sense elliott waves great even on a five minute time frame like this once we've had that trade, and again, the links uh, in the video to that breakout trade there. Uh, once we've had that trade uh, and we've taken the profit and we pull back, that fourth wave pullback on an Elliott wave sequence is fantastic to trade that fifth wave move. This last candle now is closed and it's actually formed a six star buy on the x Brad algo, as you can see there. So again, there's some really good bullish momentum here. So hopefully that video helps. Uh, check out the links below. Uh, I'll also put the link for the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite in there, uh, available for lots of different platforms. Uh, and hopefully uh, this all makes sense. Keep it simple, keep it re repeatable. Simple rules. This is a, Elliott Wave's a complex um, strategy, but the software makes it very simple. You just need to follow the rules.